Welcome to Module 4 of the Divisioning eLearning series. In this module, we will learn about how the team sports are divisioned within Special Olympics. A team sport is an activity in which individuals are organized into opposing teams which compete against each other in a game following a set of rules. Special Olympics Ontario has five official team sports, which are basketball, curling, floor hockey, soccer, and softball. While each sport has its own sport rules, roster minimums and maximums, as well as athlete to coach ratio requirements, they are all divisioned in the same manner. This module will examine how team sport divisions are created. Let's get started. While gender and age are used to determine division placement for the majority of Special Olympic sports, they are not a factor for team sports. All of the Special Olympics Ontario team sports allow for mixed gender rosters with the exception of women's soccer, which is a team sport for females only. Special Olympics does not have any policies or rules around specific gender representation on the roster or while competing. As for age, there are no age restrictions on team sports. Special Olympics Ontario does encourage communities to create separate teams for youth and adult athletes due to physical differences between those age groups. Teams can exhibit a range of skills and abilities depending on the athletes that make up the team's roster. A team's ability level is based on the ability of all players collectively. Teams can expect to play against teams of similar ability in tournaments. These ability levels are called divisions. While tournament divisions are traditionally assigned with letter names, they can also be named after colors, professional teams, or other references. Divisioning rounds will be scheduled for any competition that advances athletes to the next level. The next few slides discuss ability levels and then we will expand on the process of determining divisions. Divisioning is an important concept which ensures that athletes are participating against other athletes of similar ability, resulting in fair and meaningful competition. As previously stated, a team's ability is determined by the skill level of all players collectively. The team's ability may change from year to year, resulting in movement between divisions and playing against different, different competitors. This may depend on roster changes or skill development. Some competitions are more or less competitive than others. This depends on the caliber of the athletes that attend. A team may find itself in a B division in one tournament and in the C division at a different tournament. If we use the traditional letter system for naming the divisions, we can illustrate the caliber of teams that may find themselves in a particular division at any given time or at a particular tournament. A team in the A division can compete against competitive generic counterparts. Athletes understand the rules of the sport and require minimal coaching during a competition. Teams in B division can compete against recreational generic counterparts. Athletes understand most of the rules of the sport and require minimal coaching during a competitive match. The C division would be made up of teams that can be competitive in a division of similar ability teams. Athletes may be of varied abilities and require reminders and assistance from coaches during a competitive match. In the D division, teams are developing strategy and skills to become competitive. Athletes are developing basic skills in the sport and require coach support for most aspects of the game. The divisioning process is an important part of competition, especially where there is an opportunity for advancement, such as in a provincial qualifier at the conference level or from provincial games to national games. In Stage 1, coaches will submit athlete or team skills assessments to organizers in advance of the qualifying or games competition. Previous tournament scores may also be considered. In Stage 2, teams are placed into a divisioning schedule based on the assessments and compete in a round of short games while being assessed by a divisioning committee. 
It is important that teams play their best during this round as it provides confirmation that teams will remain competitive in their assigned divisions. In Stage 3, the Divisioning Committee sets the final divisions and teams will go on to compete in these divisions throughout the remainder of the competition. Coaches will receive a skills assessment package ahead of the competition. The next section of slides will review an example of how the team assessment is made before it's submitted to the tournament organizers. In this example, we are looking at one of three soccer skills that a coach will score their athletes in. The athlete will be assigned a point score depending on the time it takes them to dribble a ball across a measured zone. Once the coach completes the three skills for each athlete on the team, they will complete the team evaluation page and submit a total score for the team to the tournament organizers. The next set of slides will review the development of divisioning round schedules and the determination of final divisions. With support from SOO's sport-specific provincial or conference convener, the tournament host will develop a divisioning round schedule based on the submitted skills assessment scores. Teams can expect to play other teams with similar skills assessment scores or may also play teams with higher or lower assessment scores to provide the divisioning committee with more information to the set of final divisions. Special Olympics Ontario does appreciate receiving tournament scores from competitions held in communities across the province throughout each season. Scores from recent games that include teams attending the current tournament can be referenced to help with the process of placing teams into the divisioning round schedule. Coaches have an opportunity to submit their feedback on their team's performance during divisioning games and provide the information to the divisioning committee for consideration during their meeting. Shown is a coach assessment form for curling. The coach can share their thoughts on how they felt their team performed against the other team. Divisioning games are meant to provide the divisioning committee with insights into the skills and ability level of each team. Most teams will play at least two modified games during the divisioning round. For basketball, each divisioning game consists of two six-minute halves. For curling, each divisioning game consists of two ends. In floor hockey, each divisioning game consists of one period of four three-minute shifts. For soccer, each divisioning game consists of two seven-minute halves. And in softball, each divisioning game is made up of one inning where each player comes to bat. Each player listed on the tournament roster must play for no less than half of each divisioning game. Once the divisioning schedule is complete, the divisioning committee will meet to review their impressions of the teams. The teams will be placed in final divisions and the teams in each division will play each other for the duration of the competition. Placements are based on the team's rankings in their assigned final division at the completion of tournament play. As a reminder, as per Special Olympics divisioning policy, the divisioning process and the final divisions cannot be protested. Let's review a few key definitions. Roster. The listing of athletes attending the tournament, tournament roster, or those playing in a particular game, game roster. Rosters are received on the day of the tournament and are used to determine eligibility for advancement. For qualifying competition, the number of players on a roster must meet the minimum and maximum numbers as per the sport rules. Skills assessment, a questionnaire and the results of a series of skill tests that the athletes on each team have been assessed on by their coach. These assessments are completed in advance of the qualifying or games competition and submitted to the competition host. Divisioning round, sometimes referred to as seeding, a series of matches to start a qualifying or games competition. Every team member plays each game. 
the team is placed in a divisioning round based on skills assessments. Divisioning Committee Sport-specific vol volunteers, along with Special Olympics volunteers, assess the teams during the divisioning round. The committee works to ensure that teams are placed in appropriate divisions for tournament play. Thank you for taking Module 4 of the Divisioning 101 course. We hope that you have gained a better understanding of how team sports are divisioned during competition. If you would like to take another module in the Divisioning 101 series, please return to the course's main page and select the module you would like to take. Thank you!